Hello my Soccer Universe to the fourth video of League Reviews for 21-22 again it is too late I know that and again the same thing right after the season when I should have shot it we had an international break and in addition I had a pretty big work project also going on which I'm very happy to say that it is finished so can breathe a little bit easy vacation coming soon so yeah good times coming as you can tell already from the title Villa La Liga I'm wearing Real Madrid the European champions uh, one of the more, more unlikely stories of this season although La Liga was always uh, their side these two leagues had kind of so and so season I mean the Portuguese league at the onset really um, promised maybe uh, even a uh, a fight of three teams for the title and then we come in triumph and march for Porto where just Sporting could not hang on uh, as always Liga Portugal uh, if you look towards the relegation I mean more than half the league is very often within that so uh, we will see that when we we'll go team by team how close uh, things are there the La Liga season uh, it is I think if you go back uh, in a few years if we go back to this season I think the over the theme will not necessarily be this great Real Madrid team although I think the Champions League win might change that perception but I have a feeling this is more of a season where all the contenders just did not live up and could not challenge uh, Real Madrid and Honestly, the way it looks like, it will take a while until anyone will be able to challenge Real Madrid again. We had the defending champions, Alteco Madrid, falling by the ways at with Barcelona on a tailspin and still finishing second, which does not bode well for the league and its perception. We had a Sevilla team where you really thought, this is their year, maybe they can challenge for a title. Completely a second half of the season to forget. Um, so, a really, really weird season. And then we had... The team that probably deserved the most plaudits in um, Real Betis that kind of went nowhere. Could not e war in the running, but more or less due to favorable scheduling in the end, they just fell by the wayside and could also not challenge. And then the fairy tale story in Champions League, Villarreal in the league, and no, and also been. More, more, more or less. So yeah, uh, it was a really, really weird. It was not a vintage season, I think, for either leagues. Although I think FC Porto quite almost beat the unbeaten record um, in many ways. So that would have been a big one there. And of course, uh, Porto winning the double definitely helps. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna look at the season summary. We uh, look at you know. Um, how the league finished, we see who slotted where in the European spots, promotion, re 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 relegation. Then we look at how do the standings compare with pre-season expectations and uh, how things ended. And then I'm going to go team by team to look at their performances. Um, Portugal, I probably will do rather fast. Main reason is that of all the leagues that I'm trying to cover as channel, the one in Portugal is the one that I get the least uh, to watch or see highlights of so that's why uh, this will be rather uh, fast I see a lot more La Liga it is a little bit of a shame because I think Liga Portugal is one of the underrated leagues uh, definitely um, I'm not sure how not the ranking finished but they are right there with Liga so uh, they are a really really strong league especially but very top heavy as well and we also will see that and I will start in Portugal. And here is the season summary. As I said, double winners Porto, uh, Sporting also in groups with Benfica again have to walk through qualification rounds. Um, it is actually quite disappointing that Benfica finished only in third spot, given how well they did in Champ Champions League. And it's also a little bit of a. Um, uh, if you're Porto or Sporting, you really wonder why did Befica make the quarters and we got eliminated early. Uh, so yeah, uh, it just didn't fit, but it actually speaks for the strength of the poor, poor Portuguese league. There was a good chance that all three Portuguese teams will make it in the round of 16 of the Champions League. Braga made it to the quarterfinal of the Europa League. It tells you how strong this league is. It's very, very top-heavy. 
they make in the Europa League group stage. And this is a team that's totally enormous land. Not good enough for the total three, but uh, clearly best of the rest. As dominant over the best of, of the rest as the top three are over Braga, in, uh, in a way. And then we have uh, Gilles Vicente and Vittorio de Guimaraes rounding out uh, the European spots. Both go in the Conference League, Vittorio de Guimaraes, only because rivals Braga. Uh, because Porto won the um, uh, Portuguese Cup, no, it's not Braga. So, um, I mean, fourth place goes in the Europa League. Otherwise, Vittorio de Guimaraes would not have qualified for Europe. Relegated teams. Uh, Belenange was always uh, clear that they will go, go down. You know, there was this one game where they only fielded nine players against Benfica. Uh, but the rest are much, much, much tighter. Tondela, the team that I actually developed quite some sympathies for uh, down in Water Range, who actually finished uh, top of the t uh, uh, top half of, of the table also. Coming up, Rio Ave, who also suffered a shock relegation last season. You know, they were in the Europa League, almost eliminated Milan ahead of the group stages, and they get relegated. Uh, they are back, and then Casa Pia, uh, which I personally have never heard of, but uh, Chavez, I have uh, definitely heard of. So, yeah. On the right side of this graph, you see um, two columns with points. The left one is the actual points achieved. The right one is how many points were expected uh, in the preseason based on the ranking that we had in, in, in the preseason. And if we just look at the points change, the big winners, of course, are the top two. Porto and Sporting vastly outperforming uh, their ex expectation. Benfica, definitely stable. Uh, Braga, Gil Vicente, definitely winners. Uh, losers, the three relegated teams. However, I said it in previous videos, uh, this is only half of the story because, you know, uh, a big points gain when you already have a little point, uh, when you have already many points to be uh, gained. So 15 points gain for 7, 10 points is not as big as a 15 point gain if you were only expected 30 points. So um, it's always also good to look at the ratings and they speak a completely different story. So we see it here. The ratings again are within the league only. Uh, I'm working that for the next then the next season I will have more global ratings. I think that that might be more interesting. But for now I have them within the league uh, only. And you see the current ratings that I've won in the preseason. Most interestingly, uh, Porto actually stayed rather level uh, down to not so good performance in Europe because that plays into the ratings. That's also why Sporting is prop. I. It also tells you that although Benfica got to the quarterfinals in the Champions League, and we'll see that uh, a deeper in Champions League can really boost your rating uh, in Spain then, uh, that the league campaign for Benfica was so bad that the European exploits could not uh, lift it up. But we see here that probably on a relative scale, Gilles Vicente and Vittorio de Guimaraes are the big winners together with Family Cao, who actually finished uh, surprisingly uh, top half of the, of the table as well. Benfica, the big disappointment together with Tondela and of course, Belle Nench. So let's run through the individual season. As I said, I want to comment for every team and we'll go through it to, uh, in the order that teams finish the 2021 season. And we'll start, of course, with the reigning champions. Sporting. To the left, you see how the expected points developed over the season is usually a good way to gauge how uh, how big of a win it was. It's, tip it's typically the bigger the change up, the bigger the win was. Uh, so you won against a bigger, big opponent. If it goes kind of sideways, it was a draw for big teams. It might also uh, uh, even uh, uh, steeper downward. And if it goes really down, then it is typically a loss. So this is to the left. So to the right, it is the rating on a different scale between minus three and three. Yeah, I should have probably adjusted that, but um, so, so, so be it. Anyway, only the relation that uh, really matters here. And what you can already see in from both graphs is that uh, to the left, there is a clear big three in Port Portugal. One could argue even one, two, three. Then there's a gap with Braga in the middle, of course. And then everything else is packed back together with uh, two teams a little bit lifting themselves from front back. But just look at around between March and May, how the rest of the league are just squished together. And for the ratings, it's a very, very similar story with, um, we can already say, Braga in no man's land. But let's look at the graph for Sporting here. We see that actually had a pretty good start to all to those seasons. But... Um, at the beginning of, of the year, it really seems like it's a very tight race between Sporting and Porto. Uh, Sporting actually overtaking Benfica at this point. 
However, they could not keep keep, keep up. They dropped points. They lost some some games. Where is Sporting? Uh, where where is Sporto? Uh, when they were about to lose, they actually drew level. So things are falling there that way. And then they had actually the lead in Porto that they got packed back. And then with red red, red cards in the end, it's a very safe second spot the Sporting ahead. And in the ratings, they even overtook now big rivals Benfica. Porto is just one triumphant march. It was up, 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 up. Yes, there were occasional draws or uh, then very late on a loss in there, but over a really strong season for Porto. The only thing that I have to say, their rating barely moved, which to me was a little bit, it's a bit surprising, but it's basically they were expected to dominate the league. And in Europe, they probably did a little, little bit worse than uh, one could have expected. Benfica, the uh, completely uh, sideways season. Good start. They were at one point the favorite, and then uh, it's kind of uh, mid 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 October it started to fall to, to fall apart. Season went nowhere, and you, and, and you see from uh, being almost there as a challenger of Porto, they're now only in third place. Fourth place Braga, I said it already, caught in the middle, going nowhere. It was always going to be a fourth fourth place there. Too good for the remainder of the league and too weak to actually challenge. Although you know they had their okay, they they had their wins against uh, I think uh, Benfica. Had, had a big win there as well. Uh, Passos finishing high last season, this season not so much. A season that kind of went a little bit down in the end. They sell, salvage it very similar for San Santa Clara. It's almost the same curve for Santa Clara. Vittoria de Guimarães, um, yeah, always top of this rest of the league pack. Uh, but one would say they should be the number five. Five times this time they finished only in six, although. Overall, when I look at their at their rating, their um, clear number five team there. Uh, More range, a descent into madness. Although never really the worst team in the league, but uh, results just didn't go their way. Uh, Fam Fam from Family Cow, a late push keeps them in the league. And as I said, we, we said they actually finished in the top half of of the table. There was a period, uh, especially in the midway of the season, that one could imagine that Family Cow might get implicated as well. But most team, teams are. I always say the Belenenge, last place team actually from the onset and. Um, if you know a little bit about the backstory between uh, Belenenge uh, SAD, which is this club, and the actual Belenenge, Bel Bel it's a very, very sad story for a very traditional club from uh, Lisbon. Gilles Vicente, probably the positive uh, uh, surprise of, 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 of the season, especially a really, really strong winter, enabled them to finish in fifth spot uh, towards the end of, of the season, a little bit ru running out, out of gas, but if you boost yourself above the pack, you usually end up then all in, in a very good Euro European spot. Tondela continuously going down. Ser uh, sad to see. Boa Vista, um, very, very steady, but not great. Absolutely not great. Another uh, big name in the port, port, port Portuguese game and no going uh, basically very much sides, sideways. Maritimo, uh, we're in relegation trouble uh, in early, early, early November, but a good second half of the, of the, of the season. Don't see them um, in trouble. It actually, they finish also just outside of the top half of the tail. Put them an inch. Uh, pretty much the opposite. Good start and then a bad finish, but uh, enough to stay in. Uh, Sturil, uh, very similar to Porto Manange, except that they had a really good start to the season. They were expected to get relegated as a promoted model team, but did actually quite well. So uh, also in the ratings, always kind of, kind of, kind of have a bottom, but good season uh, that ended. Um, they stayed in. Vizela, um, probably always the worst team in the league, at least by rating, but they managed to stay in. And uh, it looks more like that they got the results or they just did enough, whereas the others kept on losing. And Aruka is very, very similar, maybe with a slightly better start, but other than that, uh, they are almost next to each other, those two teams. So, from Portugal, we go over to Spain. And again, uh, as the summary we have in the Champions League group stage here, we have four teams. Same four teams that we had last season, different order, Atletico Madrid fall down, otherwise it's Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Sevilla. How boring, in a way. It's also that all the other three teams in, in 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 Europe are the exact same teams as last season. Real Betis and Real Sociedad going to the Europa League. 
Villarreal last season due to winning the Europa League they made it to the Champions League this time they have to play final in the Conference League but only in the playoff all the other teams are in the group stage we have Betis winning the Copa del Rey and of course Real Madrid are Champions League winners which basically puts a little bit of cherry on top of the La Liga season and kind of shows La Liga is not quite the league that is done yet relegated shock relegation for Granada never expected that in a million years uh, but it did happen and uh to the dead detriment to a, to a team that actually uh, was one of the highlights of previous seasons to be honest levante also didn't really expect it levante for a long long time had good performances especially against, against big teams but they couldn't get the wins they had, uh, mostly draws and i think this is what uh, uh, did them in the rots in whereas alaves was always a team that was going to be down there they are now replaced by almeria Real Valladolid, who got relegated last season and on the last day by a miracle escaped. And then Girona also makes it back. They win the playoffs, although they were only the uh, lowest seed in there. Uh, but they win the final against uh, Tenerife. Uh, as we, when we look uh, comparison between preseason expected points uh, and uh, actual points, we see that the big performers are, of course, Real Madrid, but uh, bigger than that. Uh, Betis and Rayo. Rayo was had a really f a fun first half of the season, so uh, very well deserved. Whereas the losers, Getafe, a huge one. Alaves, of course, a huge one. Uh, all the relegated teams don't look particularly well, but also Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Uh, it's even bigger, uh, a much different story if we look at the rating change because there's not too many uh, very positive changes. I mean, we can see Rayo, Villarreal, Villarreal boosted by the Champions League semi-final. Um, Real Madrid basically staying where, where they are. Barcelona also not that bad and we will see they have one of the most interesting performance curves over the season. One that you have seen in my review videos if you have been watching. Atletico Madrid also down Sevilla, really, really bad. And of course, Granada. That did not come, that, 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 this was totally unexpected that Granada are going down. Okay, uh, let's walk through the seasons and we'll start again. Champions Atletico Madrid. And you can see already, unlike Portugal, uh, the Spanish league is a whole lot more spread out. So it's a much more, there's one team that is clearly on top, but the rest, you know, they are it's not as clear of a two or three uh, class society, so, so society, which is actually strength of the league. And actually, when uh, we look at the points that you needed for relegation, I mean, uh, with 38 and 35 points, you got relegated. That's actually a relatively high points total, uh, given that most of the time you say with 40, you're safe. So um, uh, it speaks also for a rather uh, even league, which is not a bad thing to have. Uh, when we look at Atletico Madrid's uh, season, yeah, it started out so and so, but it really took a, a turn down uh, in late December uh, with hitting a rock bottom early March. Then they put together a slight string. They actually were not too bad in the Champions League, also, also lucky on many occasions. And yeah, finish out, you thought they messed up Champions League and very late on they make a push uh, to stay in, but ratings wise also it's continuously going down. Real Madrid, uh, the opposite. Uh, without being great, I mean, the graph is not going up. There's a lot of up and down in there, but in the end, it is just, they were just too good for the rest of the league. Uh, and you see in the ratings, there was a point where they were, um, and I can tell they were not in first place, although for the, just for one week, they were not in first place. And we'll talk about it very, very, very soon. But that was the point that galvanized them and lifted them not only uh, to the La Liga title, because at that point one could have seen potentially that they might um, get caught by Sevilla, uh, not necessarily by Barcelona and, and so on, but then not only did they pull away in the title race within two or three weeks, but also then made the push towards the Champions League title. And so um, the Los Blancos again are the class of the league. Yes, probably the Champions League win was more one fully deserved by the opponents that they beat but if you look at every single tie you could make an argument in every single tie they were not the better team but you beat it it was probably one of the toughest roads so in that case uh bravo real, real madrid we know their phenomenon when it comes to the champions league 
Barcelona, as I told you, it's one of the most interesting curves. And I have, have, to, have to say that um, I think the ratings curve is even more interesting than the um, curve with the expected points. You see, come October, you the rot started to set in and it was only a matter of time until Kuman got sacked. But even once Xavi come, come in, it mostly got stabilized. It was rather, rather up and down. But then, come late February, up until the international break, it was a continuous climb for Barcelona. And this was where Barcelona were at their absolute 100% best. At this point, they were the best team in the league. You see, they won El Clasico. They went to Madrid and beat them 4-0. In a performance that we, now in hindsight, say, this is something Ancelotti completely messed up. Yes, it was a good per Barcelona. Yes, it could have been a famous win. The 4 0 was flattering to Real Madrid. On the other side, uh, Ange Angelotti used this. Yeah, this was my mistake. And the players deserve better. And Real Madrid went up. Barcelona actually went down from that. After this inter inter international break, Barcelona didn't look themselves anymore. They lost to Frankfurt uh, in the Europa League, a tournament that they uh, were set on winning. And then it kind of was, uh, how to say, it was a struggle in many ways. So yeah, uh, very interesting. And at this moment, we don't even know how Barcelona will look like for the next season. The one thing I want to say is that their young core is something that would should, should make every coolest uh, look a little bit more positive uh, into the future. But I think it will be a build unless they pull up some uh, financial miracles again, which part of me really doesn't want to see because I think if you've made so many mistakes on the transfer market, you should be punished for that. Sevilla, I told you, at one point, you see here, mid-season, they were in second place. Played a lot of draws. It's all sideways for Sevilla. If they pick up the pace, they could have challenged Real Madrid. However, the end of the season was horrible. It was horrible. It was a really, really bad second half of the off of the season. Uh, I wouldn't be so surprised if Julian Lopetegui will get the sack. I, I think he's 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 one of the hottest seats uh, at this very moment. Real Sociedad, yeah, rather disappointing season over for them as well because I mean started out well, but then uh, could never hit the heights that they hit last season or the season even before. Um, but at least they stabilized themselves into a sixth place uh, finish. Real Betis, probably the most exciting team to watch. But if you look at the performance curve, yes, it is it's a continuous up. And they were probably one of the positive examples. But there are too many downs in this upward swing. So it was kind of a wavy, wavy upward pattern. Which means they never could challenge for top top four. And I was so hoping that we won't get the same top top top, top four. Because I think that those teams like Betis, Real Sociedad and to a lesser extent Villarreal are really, really exciting. Uh, and would deserve to be in the Champions League. But no, we get the same. And especially with a Sevilla team that's so boring in many ways. Although so talented, it's, it still remains a frustrating team in Europe to me. Villarreal, the graphs don't match. It is all the right side. The rise is all due to the great Champions League performances. Because in the league, they didn't go anywhere. Yes, they hit a little bit of a good uh, patch uh, from December to kind of March. But then it's all the Champions League to go over and they finish in a safe uh, seventh, seventh spot. Celta Vigo, uh, my secretly favorite team in Spain. Uh, yeah, kind of a so and so season. Although overall, the trend ratings wise is good. But. Um, the season didn't end well, let's put it that way. Uh, Granada, yeah, this shock relegation. And it's, su it's such an interesting graph because they had a bad start, but they picked it up. And while not really high on the expected points, they were rather looking safe. Even the downturn that came uh, in early in the year, you seem to have salvaged because you got the wins. You beat Mallorca 6-2 away from home. And the last two games you cannot get, 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 get done. And suddenly all the other teams start winning. And even with such a high points total, you see how the other teams are suddenly moving up. And one of them caught Granada. Shock relegation. Absolute shock relegation with a missed penalty. Bilbao going nowhere. Hmm. Although a little bit of improvement showing because you see the graph well for the rating is, is going up. Uh, also Suna, I think a very solid season for a mid-table team. 
I think that's the best way to to, to describe uh, that one. Uh, Cardiff looked like they were going down. They were definitely the worst team in, in the league, but uh, what a comeback. Starting uh, in January, they suddenly move, 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 move out, and uh, then in, in the end, uh, avoid relegation. So uh, pretty strong. And you see on the bottom, it's all moving up in Spain. Uh, Valencia... Uh, Pretty bright start to the season. I think the first half of the season was positive. The second half, not so much. And that's why we have Reno Gattuso come, come, coming in. I love Gattuso. I really do. I even think he is a decent coach. I just think there's so much negative um, noises of, about his appoint, uh, uh, appointment that I'm not sure where this will go. Levante, as I said, a team that actually had good performances but was never in there. Uh, what's really damning is that if you look where they finished in the rating, they were never among the uh, worst three teams, uh, especially in the final stretch of those seasons where they actually picked up points. It was just never enough. They were pretty much in March, you knew already that they will be going down. Uh, Getafe... Uh, just could stop the uh, rot because they looked at one point early season that they might be a surefire relegation team. They turned it around and uh, finish again uh, in, a, in in not necessarily mid mid table, but in uh, in, in, in a safeish spot. Alaves, uh, yeah, bad start. Then maybe, but in the end, it's a relegation. I think uh, they looked very much the part for most of the season. Uh, Elche. Uh, Starting out kind of lowish, but um, claw themselves back again. Safe. That's all that was needed was needed for them. Espanol a really good season back. Never really in relegation trouble. Not the greatest of season. Maybe a little bit even a downturn towards the end. But overall, I think it was a very very solid season by uh, the small team from Barcelona. Mallorca, by all accounts, I mean, yes, big win at Atletico Madrid and here and there, good, good job. By all accounts, they should have gotten relegated. Uh, they just survived at the end. Uh, and this is the big jump that actually Mallorca stays in. Not that I'm un too unhappy about it, honestly. Uh, you know, it was for me, it's Mallorca Granada, which jersey do I keep <laughs> in the... So in that sense. Uh, but yeah, um, I always had the feeling that Mallorca is one of the teams that will go down. On the other side, there's a team that have also quite some his history. So yeah, I just feel that Granada would have deserved more steam because uh, because in the last few seasons, Granada was were a really uh, fun side to watch. But you know, they might come back. Rayo is probably one of the best stories of, of the season because especially the first half of the season, they really, really played well. It was fun to watch Rayo, uh, but they couldn't sustain it. But uh, with a late push, they stay in the league. And that was the most important for them. So yeah. That ends my review for a Liga Portugal and La Liga means we have only Serie A left, which will come next week early. Please give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel, you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.